I'm Matt Shura. Uh, grew up in Gilbert, Arizona. Started fishing when I was really young. Started fishing for bluegills in a pond right down the road and really got hooked on fishing. I started uh, expanding a little bit. My dad and I, I fished with my dad. He took me fishing quite a bit and we went from bluegills and we started catching some catfish. And I saw a, a bass tournament on TV, the Bass Masters. And I just told my dad, I, I want to catch that fish. And that's one thing that's kind of special to me about Canyon Lake is uh, it's where I caught my first bass. I don't remember how old I was, but I was just a little kid and I caught that bass on a crappie jig. <laughs> and I uh, just thought it was the coolest thing and I've been, I've been hooked ever since. My name is Brad Cook. I met Matt Schur when he was about 16 years old. I was out fishing Canyon Lake. I had a bait stop called the Happy Hooker. And I was out spooning fish in about 50 foot of water. And then all of a sudden I see this boat start coming out towards me. And here comes Matt and his dad and wanted to see what we were doing. We didn't have the internet back then and cell phones and the way I was taught is bugging the, the tackle store guys. So Matt pulled up and was asking me a million questions. So I told him to hop in the boat, let me show you what's going on. So I put him in the boat, showed him on the graph what I was doing and I was spooning these fish. Handed him a rod actually. I think he caught a couple fish, you know. From then on, I just couldn't get rid of it. You know, Brad's pretty, he's pretty harsh sometimes. He tells it how it is, and if he doesn't like you, he'll tell you. But, and I started going over there, kind of hanging out, talking to him quite a bit. And he kind of took me under his wing, uh, really, you know, gave me a lot of good advice. He showed up at the bait shop, kept asking me a million questions about fishing. You know, of course, he's wanting to learn. He doesn't have the internet back then, so you could Google anything up or YouTube. Took him to Canyon Lake. We were throwing basically Westy worms, is what we were fishing with. And I don't know how many fish we caught that night, but Matt caught one of about five pounds. We head down to the lake, Canyon Lake, and, and we fished at night. And he showed me some really good areas on the lake that, uh, you know, I, I still fish to this day. I really learned a lot that night. One of those areas he showed me is, is that area where I caught the state record fish. I get a call from my wife one day. She's working at the bait shop. Brad, you ought to see the size of the fish that Matt brought in. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen. And I says, well, how big is it? She goes, well, I've seen a lot of your 10 and 11 pounders that make them look little. So de December 1st, 1991, my dad and I hooked up the boat and headed to Canyon Lake for a day of fishing. Usually that time of year, the, the fish are deeper and this has always been a great lake to, to fish spoons with, uh, jigging spoons. And you know, the fish get congregated and, and get on the shad and once you find them, you can have a really good day and it's one of my favorite ways to fish also. Yeah, so this is the actual spot here right by the marina at Canyon Lake. We decided to come back here and throw a spinnerbait on this bank. And this bank looks completely different than what it did in 1991. Um, the reeds weren't here. Uh, it was a big open bank that tied into the marina. And these docks right here are all new. Uh, they weren't here. So you could actually position the boat further out and make some long casts. So what it is, is it's just a flat, rocky bank. And I guess a lot of fish, I believe, suspend under the docks of the marina and get that shade. There's a lot of bait fish and all that kind of stuff. And I, I think at night, if you could time it right, those fish would move up, those big fish would move up on this bank, a nice flat rocky bank where they can come up and feed. And I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, and I can tell you, I didn't even know about the trout stockings and I believe they were going on back then. And I have a pretty good hunch that that fish was probably eating trout and I was in the right place at the right time. Because in December, <laughs> You know, the water's 50 something degrees, really cold. And I, was, I caught that fish in three foot of water. It was maybe two or three cranks off the bank and I caught that fish. And I was just casting out a spinnerbait on the bank like this and just slow rolling it. Uh, barely feeling the blades turn. And like I said, we hadn't been bit all day. So as I'm reeling, I get hit pretty hard. And it's probably lucky I wasn't 
paying attention because it just slapped it. And sometimes they'll slap it with their tails, sometimes they'll, they'll bump it and, and stun, you know, stun the bait, turn around and eat it. So going all day, it's noon without a bite, I finally got bit. I, I just remember telling my dad, that's what's cool is fishing with my dad. Uh, you know, man, I think I just got bit. And right when I said I got bit, it came back and ate it. So if I would have set the hook and, and, and you know, missed them that first time, I betcha I would have missed that fish. So like I said, it was kind of lucky I wasn't paying attention. But the bait I was throwing that day was actually called a, it's a spinner bait, white spinner bait, just like this. Uh, it was a half ounce spinner bait, just like I was throwing that day. And uh, the actual brand of it is a Bass Pro Shops brand. And it was called the, the Chatter Blade. And basically it was a willow leaf blade just like this, but it had a notch cut out of the, the blade where you could bend it up. And a uh, pretty cool deal, but basically identical to this, a white half ounce spinner bait. And I was just slow rolling it. Fish of a lifetime, I can tell you. So we decided that we probably ought to go take that fish to the bait shop and have it weighed because we didn't even have a scale. And that's when we uh, put it on the trailer, ended up driving to the uh, Happy Hooker bait shop that Brad Cook owned and his wife was running it that day, Bobby. Bobby called Brad and Brad uh, ended up telling Bobby and us what to do. And I says, well, has he weighed it? And I, she goes, no. And I says, well, make sure he gets it to a certified scale, get it weighed. So we're at the tackle shop with this fish and we had to go get a certified scale with two witnesses and uh, have, it, have it certified with the witnesses and then bring it to game and, the Arizona Game and Fish Department to have it inspected. So we just went to the closest grocery store because the, well, from what they told us, it had to be a certified scale and the, the butchers have those certifications because we needed that certification number also. So pull that fish out of the boat and put it in a plastic bag and walk inside with that fish dripping on the floor and walk back to the, <laughs> the meat counter and ask the, ask the butcher there to, to weigh it for us. And he just thought it was strange for sure, but uh, he didn't hesitate. He laid the paper down and set the fish on the scale. And it went up to that 15.86 pounds. So there was a couple people, I got their name and phone numbers uh, so they could be the witnesses and the butcher uh, signed the, the receipt tag that showed the weight. Right then I knew the state record before was uh, just a little over 15 pounds, and uh, I knew we had I, I knew we had it. So, took the took the fish back out to the boat, and then headed to uh, Arizona Game and Fish there on Powering University, and they were waiting for us. Jim Warnicky is the one that you know inspects the fish and makes sure it, there's nothing funny about it, that kind of thing. I think right at that moment is when it became official. Matt always credits me for him catching that fish. I didn't catch that fish. Matt caught that fish. So at that point, Jim Warnke congratulated us and uh, I guess he let the press release out. Right when we got home, I was getting phone calls from the Arizona Republic, Arizona Hunter and Angler Magazine. Really cool, getting really excited now. It's kind of sinking in that, hey, this is the, you know, this is the state record and it's a, it's a pretty big accomplishment. I was I just really excited about the media and everything coming over. We had a, uh, the newspaper, I believe, that night came over, and then we had the, the magazine the next morning come over with the cameras, and we wanted to get some pictures of the fish while the fish still looked good. So we had the fish on ice and got the pictures of that for the, the magazines, and super exciting. That's when it really kind of sunk in that, man, I just caught the state record for Arizona. So with all the, the media attention and, and uh, magazine articles, I was on the cover of Arizona Hunter and Angler Magazine, the newspaper articles, Yellow Front had a, had a, a publication, I was on the cover of that and a couple other uh, magazines, Arizona Fishing News also, and 
lots of people calling, wanting to get the story. I kind of felt the, the limelight of, of how big of an accomplishment this, you know, how big of an accomplishment this really was. And I started thinking, you know, as a tournament fisherman and everything, and we're always trying to get sponsors. I had a, actually had a, a, a small sponsor. It was just, the name of the company was Good Old Weenies. They made uh, plastic worms, and that was one of my first sponsors, and I had them. But I started thinking about the marketing side of things where, you know, hey, I was in a Skeeter boat. I had a Yamaha outboard. I was using a Shimano reel. I was using a quantum rod. So I collected all these articles and I mentioned what products I was using in those articles and uh, sent letters out to all those companies with the, the exposure I got them in the newspaper and really thinking that uh, something big might happen, you know, as a, as a, you know, as a tournament fisherman and catching the state record, I kind of thought I was going to be the next Kevin Van Dam and, and have uh, lots of big time sponsors and, and people wanting to give me boats and all that kind of stuff. And the reality of it is I, I got a, you know, thank you letters from all the companies. I got a coffee mug, I think from Yamaha and Skeeter sent me a nice hat. And uh, Shimano sent me a rod and reel, which was cool. And Quantum sent me a, a rod also. So it was really nice of the companies, but I, I kind of had a, I kind of thought that, uh, you know, I was getting ready to go big time after catching it. And I found out, uh, found out I wasn't. Still relatively new at that point and realized real soon that it's, uh, you gotta pay your dues in this sport. Fishing is definitely my passion. And from seeing the kids in the bluegill tank at Bass Pro Shops and seeing their smile on their face from catching their first fish, to doing the guide trips and getting novice anglers out and uh, helping them catch, you know, improve their game and, and helping them catch more fish all the way to, you know, the U.S. Open. 250 boats are going to launch at the U.S. Open. We're fishing for $160,000. So the whole aspect of, of fishing is my passion, starting with helping the kids to, to tournament competitions. So it's, it's in your blood and it, it's, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. So the state record held for a total of six years and it was beat out of San Carlos Lake. And that was a, that was a tough one. It was, it was sure fun to say I was the state record holder, the current state record holder and uh, was hoping it would, it would last forever, but it did get, did get beat in six years at San Carlos. And then a few years later, I know the current state record is 16 pounds, four ounces and it was caught out of Canyon Lake again. So it was really cool to share that experience that day with my dad. We uh, fished together so much and ended up fishing tournaments together, team tournaments. He was my travel partner for some of the bigger tournaments and pre-fish partner. So my dad and I became, you know, really best friends instead of a father-son relationship. We were really good friends. So that's what's really cool about fishing is uh, I know I wouldn't have had the relationship I had with my dad if it wasn't wasn't for the, the passion in fishing and, and, and my dad and my mom both have always supported me in the, the dream and the goal of, of being a pro fisherman. So it's uh, really neat that I had that day with my dad. He did, uh, he did pass away six, seven years ago, but uh, Definitely uh, uh, one of my favorite memories of fishing with my dad all those years, and I'm just really glad we could share it, share that moment together. It's one of the most memorable days of my life. Good kid, I still call him a kid. Of course, he's 45 years old, I believe now, something like that. He's outgoing, does anything to help anybody, He's gone out of his way helping me, I've gone out of my way helping him, and just a great ambassador to the sport. You just couldn't ask for a better guy to be with.